In this video, we want to look at project methodology, the systems approach. Now, a project methodology systems uh, approach refers to the implementation of a project. Uh, first of all, the project is, in a sense, imagined. It, it's brought into existence. It's talked about. Um, finally, it's assembled under a team with a project manager and they must set out the rules that they're going to follow, the methodology, the method they're going to follow uh, in investigating the particular project or implementing the project or um, performing the tasks that are required of the project. So methodology is to do with the method, the procedures that are followed in order to deliver the project. Project managers must understand the project methodology in order to manage the process effectively. Clearly, if the project managers don't understand the methodology, don't understand the method that's to be used, then clearly the project's in trouble. The project managers must understand the methodology. They must understand the processes. They must understand what's required in order to effectively perform their functions in a way that brings about a conclusion to the project. The aim of a project manager is to devise a project methodology that encompasses and interlinks all elements of a project. So that's really the function of the project manager, to look at the project, look at what's required, and then look at um, the various components, the various linkages that the, the project requires. It may need a linkage from different functional areas within the, the business. It may need linkages from the marketing department or from the production department or from design or innovation. or uh, It may need different inputs. But the project manager must understand what's required and must be able to sequence that in a logical fashion so as to bring about a successful delivery of the project. So what is a system? A system is the interlink of components and processes which are integrated together to produce or achieve a common goal or purpose. So the system is the, the interlinkages. The, the ways in which the various components and the various processes are linked. And when all of that is set out, when the project manager has um, seen what's required, seen the, the various inputs that are required, a, a system can be imagined that the project is a system. It has a starting point and has an end point, and it has inputs and functions that must be performed. And it shows how the various components are all linked together. So to that end, it is a system. In regard to projects, a systems approach is necessary to provide a holistic perspective where all project phases are integrated with effective feedback loops. In other words, the, <coughs> the systems approach is necessary to give an overall picture of the project. So in looking at the project, the, the observer, the person who is considering the project, is looking at a holistic perspective, looking at the whole project from start to finish. So it's holistic. But clear uh, within that are the linkages. The linkages to different departments, different functions, different components, different personnel the various linkages are indicated. And these may be coming from outside of the project. But the project itself is seen holistically, seen as a total project. It's seen with a start and an end. It's one complete project. But all the phases are integrated with effective feedback loops. So when, when different uh, inputs are required, they are brought into play, brought into uh, 
uh, produce the output of the project, but there are feedbacks on, on whether the inputs were effective, what could be done to improve the delivery of the inputs, um, what were the inputs uh, in terms of their efficiency, in terms of their contribution to the overall production of the project. Now the project uh, life cycle of a system. Well, a project methodology system is the integration of interlinked phases that function together to produce a set of deliverables in each phase. So a set of deliverables, a set of outcomes in each phase. And that really restates the previous slide to some extent. So if we th think of a project management process, we have different phases that need to be undertaken. We have the uh, initiation phase, getting it started, getting the project uh, designed, talked about, uh, debated, uh, getting the, the process up and running, seeing our rationale for it. Then moving to the planning phase, when should this project be undertaken, what resources should be committed, um, what are the budgets, who will be involved, uh, where will it take place, the planning phase. Then the execution process. And that's when all of the various components that were commissioned in the planning process, they're brought to bear on producing this output. And that's the execution process. And finally, there is the closing process, the one which says the project is now complete. This project is done. Projects are different from the rest of the routines of the business, perhaps. Uh, businesses tend to have um, programmed output. They tend to have continuous, repetitive output streams for a certain outputs which to sell on the market. Whereas projects are one-offs. These come into existence to achieve a certain outcome and once the outcome is achieved there is no reason for the project to continue. That's the closing phase. So when we think of project management processes we think of these four phases. Now let's start by looking at the project methodology plan. First of all, identify all activities involved in the project and develop a project life cycle. So look at all of the activities, look at everything that's involved and look at the starting point and estimate the ending point and it gives a life cycle for the project. It gives um, a sense of uh, start and end and a sense of what's involved. So then there are, there are limits, there are parameters that have been set in place. Following the project management process, uh, that's to initiate the project, to plan, to execute and to close, the ones we, we just mentioned in the previous slide, break each phase down and complete as mini projects. Try to see these as mini projects in themselves. The initiation stage, the starting up stage, see it as a project. And the outcome of that project will be the initiation of the larger project. So these can be seen as, if you like, sub-projects. The, the main project is broken down under these headings and th these may be seen as sub-projects. The initiation process, well, the strong, uh, these are not necessarily strong, but um, the initial starting point of a project is, is this one. It, it needs quite a strong statement because it needs to be emphasized the importance of the project. Otherwise, it will not be taken seriously within the, the management structure. So quite a strong statement would be useful at the start. but, but this is the initial starting point of a project. This stage identifies the need for a project. So 
it's not just good enough to have a project. There must be a rationale for the project. There must be some understanding that this project is important and the project will contribute towards the, the business and the welfare of the business. Uh, so there must be some understanding that the, the project is important and this should be stated in the initiation process. The initiation process is subdivided into the following activities. The following phases outline the key activities or documents required during the process. So here we've got the uh, the initiation process, the planning process, and so on. The, the one we had earlier, the project life cycle of a, of a system. Now, going through the initiation process, well, the first one is to appoint uh, a phase owner. Somebody must take responsibility for the project. Somebody. Uh, must be seen as the champion for this particular project. The phase owner is the project sponsor or project manager. This person is responsible for allowing the the project to go ahead. So this is the the person who is responsible for the project. And the initiation process must start with the appointment of someone who's going to take responsibility for the project and who's going to see it through. There should also be a make, go, no go decision. The decision to proceed and an analysis of a business case and feasibility study are reviewed before writing a project charter. There's no point in having a project if, if there's indecision as to whether it's desirable or if, whether it's going to produce desirable outcomes or uh, if it is debated and, and perhaps objected to by various levels of management. Uh, a decision has to be made as to go or no go. Start the project or don't. If the project is started, then there should be commitment to the project and it should be pushed through to the end. If it's no go, then simply stop it. But stop it early so that resources are not wasted. Assuming that it's go, write a project charter. This is the overall plan for the project, including objectives and approach to achieving them. So it's important that the the project has guidelines it has got limits it's got uh, it's got boundaries and these should be stated in a document uh, so the project manager should state what the project will achieve what the project will need in terms of resources how it will go about the achievement of its outcomes using those resources um, it will look at all of the various uh, problems that may arise which will militate against the success of the project. It will try to anticipate those and, and deal with them. Uh, it will also look at the use of the resources and how the resources will be uh, apportioned. Uh, what items will receive uh, what, what sums of money and, and what the timings will be and, and so on. So write a project charter if it's decided to go forward with the project. Then appoint a project manager. Now this is not necessarily the phase owner. The phase owner may be a senior min member of management but appoint a project manager. Uh, the project charter is a formal document which officially appoints a project manager. The project manager will be responsible for the delivery of the project. Uh, the project manager will not be starting from scratch. The project manager will know what the project is, uh, what the resources are, uh, who has overall authority for the project, who's been appointed as the phase owner. Um, so the project manager will have quite a lot to work on, but at the same time the day-to-day -day routine of the project must be set out and handled 
and when problems arise they it falls to the project manager to deal with those issues and make sure that the project continues assign company resources the project charter outlines the project resources uh, the project team and requirements well these should be assigned these should then be issued to the project so that different parts of the project can be started up with small teams perhaps working on different parts uh, they will receive um, their their part of the budget so as they're able to uh, procure resources and procure procure materials and and expertise indeed so they're able to start their part and it's for the project manager to ensure that uh, when these are joined when all of the various parts are joined the linkages fit smoothly so that the overall project has been completed manage startup meeting introduction of the project uh, purpose to key stakeholders and the project team it's important that everyone knows what's happening and, and what the project's about and why it's important so it's important to have a startup meeting so that the project is introduced this is what the company is working on uh, these are the the people involved this is uh, the budget this is what they're doing this is where they're located so just generally introduce the project uh, to to managers uh, from different parts of the organization so everyone's kept informed as to what's happening and and what the business is working on so that's the the set of uh, tasks within the uh, initiation process now the planning process well the planning process provides a detailed overview of the project plan so the planning process is a detailed overview the following phases outline the key activities documents required during the process so the project life cycle has uh, has a system the uh, initiation process the planning process the execution process and the closing process well here we're going to deal with the planning process so we start by identifying phase objectives setting the objectives the time the cost the quality and deliverables what are the outcomes of the whole process and when will these deliverables be delivered when will the deliverables uh, be uh, made available to the business but these are identified so identify the various parts of the, the project break it down and show where these parts fit next uh, develop build method the work breakdown structure is used to develop the, the deliverables and build method try to decide how should the project be conducted what's the build method how will the project be built how will the project come into existence what's needed uh, what teams are required what are their inputs what's what will be their outputs how will the various outputs be linked so try to work out what the the build method will be how will the project be built how will all of the parts fit together develop an execution strategy the resources required to complete the project well available resources can be in-house contractors or outsourcing so we know that resources will be required chances are uh, most projects will require resources if not all projects 
Um, so what we've got is a, a situation where it's necessary to look at where the resources are going to come from. Are they in-house? Are they bought in? Uh, how are they, they worked out completely? How, how, how are they put together? And how are they formulated? In other words, how are the teams built? What resources are required? And how will the whole exercise be executed? How will the various teams fit together? How will the resources that they use be be managed? How will the resources fit together when they're in the finished product? So that the overall project makes sense and can be delivered. It's important to check resource availability. Um, if the resources are not available, the project may fail. It's important that they have got uh, a good uh, understanding of the constraints that face the business. Um, the constraints may be in terms of manpower, training, um, the competencies of the workforce. But the constraints may also be technical the machinery, uh, the technology that's available within the organization. So check the resource availability and make sure it's understood right from the start so that there are no surprises down the line. Develop a project schedule. Development of a timeline to ensure all deliverables can be achieved. Uh, this involves all knowledge areas and trade-offs. So try to be as precise and as accurate as possible in looking at uh, the project schedule. Perhaps start with a, a good Gantt chart, but develop it so that uh, feedbacks and disruption and surprises, surprises in the sense that something fails or something uh, didn't work the way it was anticipated, so that these can be handled, can be dealt with and it can be integrated into the project in a way that enables the project to continue even if such eventualities arise. Now the execution process. This phase is the, um, the plan taking effect. All necessary activities are carried out in order to bring the project to completion. Now the following phase uh, outlines and key activities and documents required during this process. So now we'll look at the execution process. Here's our uh, uh, original uh, schema and now we're down to the execution process. Well we start here by issue instructions. This is the execution process. This is the one that makes it all happen. So issue instructions. So the the project manager must issue instructions to the project team. But those instructions will be agreed with the, the phase owner, uh, the person who originally came up with the idea or who is promoting it within the business. And then the project manager issues these instructions to get the ball rolling, to get it started. And then it's necessary to monitor and control uh, the project and team performance is monitored and all activities are controlled to ensure deliverables will be achieved in the set timeline. So it's a question of carefully monitoring all the way through progress, issues, uh, what's gone wrong, what's gone right, uh, what are the successes and the failures and how can they be overcome and uh, ensuring that the, the project is going to meet its objectives. So uh, it's, it's a question of monitoring and controlling. And then manage scope changes. Well, scope changes are logged and assessed and decisions are communicated. 
Uh, scope changes is, is when sometimes when projects are set up, what it's aiming to achieve has been widened. The, the management wants it to achieve more. It could be used in different contexts or it uh, can be used in a variety of ways which were not originally planned. Or indeed it could go the other way. They, they no longer wanted to do certain functions. It's, uh, it's been reduced in its scope. But make sure that that's been managed and that there is good information flow and that any changes that management require of the project are communicated in good time and are feasible and that meetings can be held which will be productive in the sense that they will find solutions to accommodate the changes required by management. Manage build methods. Well, changes to the build method are managed and accessed. Uh, now, the, the build method, is, it's, it's how the project is going to be conducted, how the project is going to be set up, how it's going to be used, what are the technologies that will be implied within the project, what personnel, <coughs> what's the interface between the personnel and the technology, um, what's the, the flow chart between one part and the next, and so that's the build method. But sometimes there may be changes to the build method because new technology has come out or, or perhaps the management feel that the customer's requirements may have changed slightly. So the, the build methods will have to be changed as well. So it's a question of managing those changes. Manage configuration. Operational changes are managed. That's the point. So, in the process of looking at the project, it's a question of ensuring that whatever changes management bring about, these are managed. And that the, the plan, whatever the plan, the current plan is for the project, that is being effectively managed also. So it's managing the configuration. This is what the configuration of the project is, this is what has been managed. And this is what has been delivered. And issue a certificate of completion. Now these are issued by the project manager. When the project is completed, issue a certificate of completion. The project is done. Uh, the requirements that were set out at the start in terms of the timeline um, the resources that were committed, um, the scope of the project and so on, all of these will have been met and an, upon completion a certificate of completion is issued by the project manager to show that this project has now been signed off. Now the closing phase which really overlaps with the last point I've made with the execution one. But <coughs> the closing phase confirms that the project has been completed and the deliverables measured and achieved. So this is the confirmation that the project is now over. It's now being completed. This is the handover and termination of the project. The following phases outline uh, the key activities and documents required during the process. So this is our project life cycle as a system and we're dealing now with the closing phase. So verify commissioning process. How the deliverables will be communicated, transferred, tested and commissioned. So it's a question of handing over the project but handing it over in a way that meets the requirements that were originally set out and that means that the the project will have to be tested it will have to be eventually commissioned and brought into production within the business it will have to contribute to the business um, but there will have to be a good system of communications between the the project team and the management who will take over the project 
and use the project in the future. Manage receiving process. Well, the, deliver, the, the deliverables are received with all composing documents. So it's, it's essential that the project is handed over in a way that's understandable to those who are going to use it. And that means there should be good documentation and good training associated uh, with the delivery of the project. It's, it's not right to just deliver the project and expect uh, workers in different parts of the organization to just pick up the project from there and use it. They may have to be trained, they may have uh, quite, quite lengthy train, training to get to understand the project and what it's trying to do. And uh, So it's a question of having good documentation and good uh, follow-up care uh, for the, the clients who originally commissioned it. And these could be, as I said, internal within the business. A different department wants a certain process, which became the project. And now the project's completed. That particular department will take it over. But they need to be trained on how to use it. Manage commissioning process. Well, inspection of the deliverables to confirm they have been completed as per the project plan. It's important <coughs> that when the project is completed that the original requirements for the project are again consulted to make sure that what the project is delivering is what was required at the start. Man uh, manage the handover process. Well. Um, handing over of the completed project to the right stakeholder or client, making sure that uh, it's handed over in a way that, as, as I said earlier, it's understandable, uh, it's got support, documentation, training perhaps associated. Uh, there is a package of support that's handed over to the stakeholder or the person who originally commissioned the project. Uh, manage the termination process. Well, officially close of project, uh, end of contractors, close all accounts, assets, and team closures. So it's a question of managing the close down. Make sure that the teams are reassigned, uh, that the contractors have been contacted to ensure that there's no more supplies coming through in the pipeline. Um, close all of the accounts and make sure that the accounting function within the business understands that the project has now come to an end. Uh, so just manage the, the wind down of that project. Manage phase review, assessment of overall project performance and deliverables and produce a closure report. How well did the project go? What were the problems? What was confronted? What issues? How were the issues dealt with? Um, what surprises or what unusual problems arose? Um, if it was to be conducted again, how would they go about it? Um, what changes would be made? So just generally manage uh, the management of the phase review, looking at the whole the whole phase, the whole issue, and how how was it delivered? How how did it work? And produce a report indicating criticisms of the techniques used, as well as solutions to problems that were found, issues that arose which were not expected, and just generally produce a report uh, so that there is a history of the project within the. Uh, company and senior management may have consulted and get ideas for future projects to enhance the way future projects are conducted. That's the source I've used throughout this particular session. Um, a very good um, resource worth uh, looking at if you can find a copy. We 
have had problems in trying to locate copies of it but um, if you can get your hands on one it's it's a good uh, solid text on this area highly commendable but that's all we're going to deal with here so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching